Of all the things I photographed, I love photographing horse racing the most. It is my love and my passion. There's no bigger challenge and no greater reward than getting a great image at the track. When I get behind my lens, after the call to post, everything goes quiet. I am presented with this endless canvas of colors from the silks and moving muscle of horsepower barreling past my lens. But horse racing is more than just horses going around the track. It's a sport with a huge representation of horsemanship, teamwork, and performance. As a photographer, I'm always asking myself, how do you interpret this sport to others in a meaningful way and leave a lasting presence? There are so many technical elements when photographing at the races. There's the action at the track, portraiture of the paddocks, and the landscape of the grounds, each with their own specific technique to get the shot. All that matters to me is the final image and creating something beautiful inside the camera. When you capture the details in front of you with your lighting and perfect timing, you begin to tell a story. I don't spend a lot of time photoshopping or altering my images. I grew up mesmerized with the photography in National Geographic. There you witness something raw and honest and a reflection of true reality. Their strict rules of unediting images meant the quality of a photographer's work had to come straight from their talent behind the camera. It is of this quality that I uphold King's victory too. If you need to make a picture interesting using filters, it really wasn't a good image to begin with. I was taught early on there are picture takers and then there are image makers. In this digital era, millions of photos are taken daily at tracks across the world. On any given day, there are four to five photographers at the rail alongside with me, all of us capturing the same moments presented in front of us. My goal is to get new perspectives and angles and use different techniques with different technologies to have my work stand out from everyone else's. And this is where I came up with the idea of my sovereign award-winning image. I live three and a half hours away from Northlands Park, which means an early start to the day to get morning workouts. I have used helmet cams before to get first person view of riding the horses, and the footage is always exciting to get back. I knew I wanted to do something different and use technology like nobody has done before and get a unique view and push the limits. I got this idea in my head that what if instead of the rider wearing the helmet cam, what if the horse did? So that's exactly what I did. I invented a safe rig for a camera to be mounted between a horse's ears. The video turned out to be amazing, but it was when I switched the camera to picture mode that I really started to capture something. Right before my eyes were those personal moments between a horse and a rider never shared before, and I knew I had something special. When the Sovereign nominations were announced, I was in awe and absolutely honored to be selected. To be in Toronto felt so surreal. I was so nervous getting ready for the awards, but no matter what the outcome, I was pleased just being there. And the outstanding photograph goes to, gosh, I hope this doesn't say La La Land. <laughs> Cody Gregor. Wow. What an honor. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, uh, I just want to thank my beautiful wife, Kira, you know, my mom, Leslie, and my dad, Gary. My sister Amanda, my brother Ty, George Estedia, and Mass Man in the picture. I can't thank you guys enough. I just want to dedicate this to my kids, Leah and Sienna. Never give up on your dreams. Thank you. Woo! When they announced my name, it was just like that feeling when your very first horse crossed the finish line how your breath was taken away as you crossed the threshold into the winner's circle. I love visiting different tracks, grandstands, and seeing their historic pictures on the walls. I can't help but wonder if those photographers back then knew what legacies they would be leaving behind. Someday, 100 years from now, I wonder if my work will be up there for generations to gaze upon.